Well, hello, we're from Ridgeview. Uh, we came from Iowa, and our proposal that we were given was told, hey guys, do you wanna come up with something to put on the space shuttle? Well, sure, why not? Uh, our project is based on tardigrade cell growth and how microgravity will affect their, affect their maximum cell size. And I am the principal investigator, and this is my team. Tardigrades are very viewable by a microscope. Um, here's a picture of them. We didn't get it on our presentation, but they kind of look like little bears. So they're kind of cute under the microscope. <laughs> they are eudolytic. This means that each individual has a fixed number of cells throughout its adulthood. With this in mind, we could then conclude that any growth observed was the result of the cell growth of the individual. Tardigrades are resilient. They can survive harsh environments quite easily. By using tardigrades, we, we were ensuring that organisms would survive until they could be measured upon return. For the procedure, uh, we were told of this uh, experiment, and we came up with three proposals, and then, one of, and then within our school system, we chose the top one. And first we ordered our tardigrades from Trans-Mississippi Biological Supply. Next, we carefully measured and counted tardigrades via microscope and placed them in test tubes with approximately 30 tardigrades in each tube with an adequate food supply. This was done at Buena Vista University Labs with the assistance of Dr. Melinda Coogan. And one of the samples was sent to Florida to be sent on STS-135, and the others remained in our lab as control. Uh, for our data analysis, on July 8th, the tardigrades were sent into space on STS-135 Atlantis. Uh, four of our project team's mem team members were presented for the, for the launch. The shuttle returned to Earth on July 21st, and we received our experiment sample shortly after. Upon the arrival of, this, of the sample, our project team met at the University Lab, University lab to, analyze, to analyze the results. We carefully measured the tardigrades from both the space and Earth samples. That's the difference between uh, the microgravity data and the control data. And what you see here on this graph, we have the microgravity before and the microgravity after. We noticed that when our results came back, we did not see the, significance ch the significant change that we wanted to see. Uh, their cell size did not grow like we thought they would because of their food supply had run out. We did find out. Um, this shows that there's very, very small change, and we're hoping that eventually we can get some more testing done at our local college and able to further go into all of our data that had come back. Uh, Dr. Melinda Coogan uh, helped us a lot with the data analysis. She used a, con the test that we used was called a T-test, and that's for the standard test that is used for comparing two uh, different da uh, data systems. And it was called the T-test, and yeah. we used uh, pipettes having to suck them out of the wells that we had sent up. Uh, all of you know that they were, came in those little about six inches long and about two inches deep. Couldn't send very much up and we had to pipette them and look at through them through the microscope and measure them. And it was very, very difficult process. We spent more than... Countless yeah. hours at the college trying to see these little things. You can barely see them at all. So. For our conclusion, uh, the analysis of our data shows that while subject to microgravity, the tardigrades grew an average of about 13 micrometers. On the other hand, tardigrades subject to normal Earth gravity grew an average of about 32 micrometers. Our team concluded that the growth difference uh, observed was insignificant and our data was not enough to be entirely conclusive. Uh, we'd like to thank our teachers, teacher facilitators, Mr. Witten and Mrs. Wheeler. We'd our Ida County Economic Development helped us a lot throughout this and our school board especially helping us get here, get to the launch. It was just unbelievable, our community support that helped us on this. And there's also Dr. Melinda Coogan of Buena Vista University. Uh, Jim Christensen also helped us a lot. Um, 
remarkable people that can change a lot in such a little time that gave us this opportunity, and we'd like to thank you all very much. Questions? Yes, I have a question. Actually, after reading your proposal, tardigrades have become my new favorite horribly powerful organism. How would you kill them? You don't. They do not die. <laughs> because uh, that, that's one of the big problems we face in sending probes to places like Mars to look for life, is we need to get rid of all of ours. Yeah. Uh, if you, I don't know how many people are familiar with tardigrades, but they've done experiments. They've, they can survive for long periods in boiling water. They can survive uh, atmospheric pressures 10,000 greater, 10,000 or 10 times greater than can be found on Earth. They're, and I think they've even withstood the vacuum of space for short periods. Uh, like I, like was, what was in the presentation, we use them because, for this purpose, because they're not easy to kill. I think the reason, and, uh, the reason they survive is because they basically dehydrate themselves and go into uh, comatose. And so that's how they survive. I, I do not know the answer to your question. I don't know exactly how to kill them. <laughs> Hi. So considering the resilience of tardigrades, where are they normally found? Are they uh, like... They're the found systems. in salt water, uh, salt water, fresh water. So they're an aquatic organism. Yes, they are aquatic. Okay. So did you put it in some oh, one your um, actual experiment? Did you place them in like a water? Uh, if you were when you grow tardigrades. When you grow, they have to be in a fresh water with uh, algae or some type of bacteria. That so that was your food pl supply. And plankton. They we fed them with plankton. Uh, that's what we sent up in right. the well. Thanks. That was my question. What was, what was your food source you sent mm -hmm. up for them? Yeah, we sent up, uh, they have algae and then That's plankton. And plankton. And, um, well, and how do you believe that your experiment will help, will help to humanity in the future? Well, by studying cell size, we if could, we can increase yeah. their exoskeletal size, possibly in the future, if we would have to grow produce up in orbit or in space, um, we might be able to exceed that and able to grow food there, maybe grow new life there. We do not know. Hopefully more research we, that can come out of this. We are not sure yet, but that is our hope. And also tangential, like studying cell, yeah. just overall cell size growth. That has applications in medicine, human physiology in space, all those things. Thank you.